hi everyone welcome back and thank you so very much for clicking to watch this video welcome back to another episode of wednesday's wahala today's story is a very tragic one because we're going to learn about this young beautiful girl who was finished i'm going to use the word finished because you know youtube doesn't want us to use some kind of words yeah <laughs> so i'm going to use the word finished for you know she was finished by her boyfriend after years of DV. Now, what makes this very, very tragic and sad is not just the fact that she was finished, but the fact that this could have been avoided if only the police had listened to her. So this girl cried for help. This girl called the police several times. She begged them, please, this guy is going to hurt me save me from this guy but they didn't listen and at the end he took her life but we're gonna get into all of that in a few minutes this video i'm going to be using my olori one palette from juvia's place back in december i did get all three of my olori i keep wanting to say elori it's olori olori palettes it's one two and three but i haven't gotten a chance to use them yet Okay, so I'm going to be starting with a lorry one. This is what it looks like. Now, I'm just going to say that all three of them are not my favorite color stories. But I got them because I, I collect Juvia's Place palettes for whatever reason. Don't ask me why, but yes, I do. So we're going to be using that today and let's see what we come up with. Lina was a young woman from Rwanda who had immigrated to the United Kingdoms in search of greener pastures like we always say it was the fifth of six children born of born into a very christian family her dad was a pentecostal pastor and her mom was also a pastor but retired at, at some point so she migrated to the uk to meet her brother who had already been there for like 10 years already and I don't know if this was the situation, but I remember growing up, and I don't know if that still happens, but most of the Ajabota or well-to-do parents will have their kids travel to their abroad right after college. And college for us was like secondary school. So right after secondary school, they'll travel abroad for university. So I don't know if that was her situation. But in 2007, like I said, she traveled to the UK to meet her brother and they lived together for a little bit but then she had to move to the town where her school was because she had come there as a as a student so she was very active in the community she would volunteer at her church she loved to dance and the brother even stated that she had her own dance group like she would dance like their traditional Uganda music she loved that and because she was very beautiful, very tall, dark, beautiful girl, what we call mannequin, right? <laughs> I remember that we called tall and beautiful girl, they called a mannequin. So one time there was this person or this agent that met her and was like, have you ever considered being a model? You know, you're beautiful, you're tall, you know, you have the, the size and the height for it and all of that. And she thought about it. She was like, hmm, maybe I can do that, you know, and that's how she got into modeling. Whatever she did, she did with her whole heart. When she got into modeling, she took it very seriously. And it's that passion, that seriousness of hers that made her even compete in the Miss Africa competition in UK. It doesn't say how far she went with that but she did participate she was one of the contestants of miss africa uk she was also enrolled at the university because she wanted to be a social worker she always dreamt of going back home someday and changing the way social work works back home she wanted to change things like i don't know but sometimes I, I think about that like what can i do what are we what can we do to make things better back home because honestly 
sometime in 2009, while Lena was at a function, she had gone out with her friends to a party and she met this young man called David, David Kikawa. Now he was charming, nice looking man, and they kind of clicked almost immediately. So she fell in love with this guy, started dating him, and things were fine in the beginning. Okay, they were doing okay, on and off here and there, but pretty much okay. In 2010, Lena discovered she was pregnant while she was dating David. And for a young woman, young woman from Africa, from a Pentecostal background, her parents are pastors, for crying out loud, to discover that she is pregnant, out of wedlock, it was kind of like a shock to her and it was kind of like a shameful thing for her. She didn't feel good about herself. She didn't feel good about it. That's like an abomination, okay, for African community. And again, I'm saying not only that she's African like that, but from a religious background like that, the parents are pastors and all of that. So she felt really ashamed. And that's the reason why she didn't even tell her brother that she was pregnant until she was about eight months gone, okay. But when she discovered that she was pregnant, I guess at the time, David was fine with it. And they even decided to move. They moved out of where they were living and they moved to another, another city. And they started living together to take care of the child. And it is believed that that is when things started going bad in the relationship because I'm not sure what Lena was doing at the time if she was working but it said that she was financially dependent on David at that point so David was financially abusive mentally emotionally physically like all the colleagues that are out there he did to this girl while she was pregnant when the physical abuse started she told her brother and he was really pissed he was like no i need to go confront this guy like why why would you put your hand on my sister i'm going to confront him let's talk let's talk it out man to man and, and all of that but lena refused lena was like no please don't don't go you know at the end of the day it's just both of us at the house if you go talk to him he's gonna get mad and stuff and i can only imagine I mean, this isn't not probably what she said, but I can imagine her saying that, oh, you know, probably he's going to change. Maybe he's overwhelmed with the baby coming and everything. Maybe when the baby comes, things are going to get better. Or maybe she started blaming herself that maybe it was me. Maybe if I hadn't done this, maybe if I had not said a word or, you know, all the, the, the things that, all the excuses that we make for other people you know so the brother was like okay I'm gonna leave it alone you know it's not like it's not my problem but you know there's really not much I can do if you don't want me to do anything so the brother left it alone but then the abuse continued and at some point she is the one, Lena is the one that came and asked for her brother's help. She was like, please, you know, I know last time I told you not to get involved, but this time I really need you to talk to him. Maybe if he listens to you, maybe if you talk to him, he's going to listen and all of that. So the brother goes and tries to intervene, tries to talk to David about what he's doing to Lena. And David denies. David is like, no, I would never do that to Lena. I love her. I would not, never lay my hands on her. Guy lies to the brother's face that he hasn't been abusing Lena. Lena finally had the baby and to her greatest surprise, the abuse did not stop. Okay. He kept abusing her. He kept beating her and being violent to her and and all of that several instances where he would put a pillow over her head 
he will use a weapon on her like the sharp weapon that you use to cut stuff again i'm not going to use some of those words because of youtube but you know what i'm talking about he will use that weapon on her and Le lena called the police several times okay so several times she will call the police the police will come out they will assess the situation and they were like huh it's not a big deal it's just a, a standard like the the term they use was standard risk Standard risk is like the lowest risk ever. In March of 2011, during one of those, their physical assaults, Lena had called the police. When they came out, they took him away because they actually met him. Like when they came, he had the weapon in his hand. So they took him away. But guess what? They only kept him for the night. They kept this guy for the night and the following day, they released him back to her. I did mention that David Gikawa had eight previous convictions. This guy was a convicted, can I say felon? Like he's been to jail several times. He had eight period convictions for what violent like violent crimes he was a violent guy okay who's been to jail several times now what the police should have done in that situation when you're called out for a DV what they should have done was to check this guy's background check his background and see if he has any previous assault cases or if any of if the police has been called before for anything like that they didn't the police did not check the record thinking that at this point Lena she's like okay I'm gonna do the right thing you know I'm gonna stay with this guy because he's the father of my child I'm just gonna persevere you know I'm just gonna deal with it because remember I told you her background she wasn't really happy about the situation she wasn't happy about being pregnant out of wedlock and all of that so I'm thinking she thought she was just gonna do the right thing and stay with the father of her child but obviously there's only so much that anybody can take okay at some point she got sick of it and in 2012 she decided she'd had enough she took her daughter and she moved out she moved out of her apartment with David and she went and rented her own place now the mistake that she made was that she let David know where she was going like I don't know if she told him or he found out but he knew where she she moved at and of course he came over there and pleaded with her apologized you know it's never gonna happen again I'm sorry I can't live without you it's our daughter blah 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 and being the kind-hearted good girl that Lena is she takes him back Mm, 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 mm. they continue with the relationship and the first few weeks are fine David is acting nice acting like everything is okay like nothing ever happened and after a few weeks of pretending he starts again with the violence and the assault and everything at one point Lena travels back to Africa. She goes to see her family and she's explaining to them her struggles with David and how he's been abusing her and everything. And I think that's where they encourage her to leave him. While she's there, they warn her, they tell her, listen, you need to leave this guy. This guy is going to finish you. You know because obviously you're trying 
and obviously the police is not doing a good job of keeping him away from you so you need to leave you need to run so they they encouraged her and yes when she went back she was determined to leave she got back she told him like you know we can't be together anymore i've had it you need to leave my apartment because now he was in her apartment remember she had left and moved to her place so you need to give me back my keys you need to leave my apartment and this is where the guy got ballistic he's like uh, uh, go i'm not leaving you you're not leaving me nobody is leaving anybody there's no leaving going on anywhere you know if i can have you nobody's gonna have you so he kept the keys it was like i'm not going anywhere so lena again decided to move again she up and left her apartment and moved to another place and once again i don't know how because well maybe i do know how because he started stalking her okay he was stalking her he will be following her to wherever she went so i'm guessing when she moved this time again he followed her and he knew where she went in the days leading up to her demise Lena had a gut feeling. It's like she felt it. She knew that something was going to happen. She knew that David was going to hurt her. She had even called her brother and told him how she didn't feel safe. She told him how she felt like a prisoner in her own house because this guy was outside the window all day watching her watching her every move and threatening people that were coming to visit her and and stuff so she was scared on the 28th of july she had called the police three times just crying begging for help telling them this guy is going to hurt me please save me the 28th was just just a couple of days before the incident she called begging this guy is outside my house oh my god this guy is outside my house he's threatening me he's going to hurt me please save me from him and finally the police shows up they show up again they assess the situation and this time they decide okay now this is medium risk okay it's gone from standard to medium so they decide to take him away they tell him you have to stay away from this house if you need to get in lena's apartment for whatever reason you need to contact us okay you can't just go there on your own you need to let us know and one of the police officers is going to accompany you night of the incident after trying to reach Lena and she decided she wasn't picking his call, David wanted to go to the apartment and he knew that for him to do that, he had to contact the police first. So when he called, when David called the police, you guys, you're not going to believe this. The police officer that picked up the call told David that they didn't have anybody at the time to accompany him to see to accompany him to Lena's house that they didn't have anybody and you can just go you know just go I'm sure it's gonna be okay I'm sure you're not gonna do anything stupid because you know you know better you better not do anything stupid so go ahead because there's no one to take you to Lena's house like how else can we say that these people just failed Lena? This is somebody that has, he had 23 hits of carrying weapons, of assault, of anything that you could think of. This guy was accused of. And then nobody checked his background. Nobody checked the risk or anything and they just let him keep going back and going back and going back to this woman 
Of course, because the police had given him the go-ahead, David decides to go to Lena's house. Guess what time? 4 a.m. Like, what good could come out of someone like David going to another person's house at 4 a.m.? He knew. He had planned it. Like, he knew that that is what he wanted to do. I mean, you should be a winch or a monitoring spirit to be going to somebody's house at 4 a.m. in the morning. So he goes there and somehow he had the key to Lena's apartment, left himself in and just completely massacred this girl. I'm going to spare you the details of all the things that he did to this girl, but it was just terrible. It was horrific. Okay? And mind you, he's doing all of this while Lena's two-year-old daughter is in the house, sleeping. Mm, 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 mm. So, while he's in there tor torturing her, her neighbor, her neighbor hears all the screaming and the commotion. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. Like, why is this neighbor screaming? What is going on? She's been attacked. So the neighbor runs out to help. And he's trying to kick in the door, trying to get in the apartment to help. And at first he has a hard time getting in because this guy, David, has his back to the door. He has his back to the door so the neighbor can really get in to help but he keeps struggling keeps struggling and finally the neighbor breaks in and David is too scared being the coward that he is he runs off but unfortunately it is too late and Lena succumbs to her stab wounds. Poor thing. She tried. This girl tried. She fought for her life. She begged the police. She begged, she, she talked to people about what she was going through. But unfortunately the police couldn't protect her. It was too late. The police starts the manhunt for David. He ran away, was hiding at a friend's place. Later on that day, he turns himself into the police. He's arrested and they go to court. And of course, like there was no doubt, like the police had all the evidence against this guy. Okay. They had motive. They had all the phone calls from the police. He was her partner at the time or ex-partner. They had the witness that had seen him and that kind of, well, I won't say saved her life, but the, the witness that intervened, you know. So what was really, really heartbreaking for the family during the court proceedings he didn't there wasn't any remorse like he wasn't sorry for what he did he didn't apologize to the family instead he was saying really really mean things about lena saying bad things about lena like kind of blaming lena for what happened to her like it was her fault that he did what he did and he even said that he planned to do like her, he planned to take her life, take the life of their daughter and his own life, you know, for some sick reason. That's what he planned. So when they asked him, okay, so why didn't you do that? He said, because the knife broke. Can you imagine? He said the knife broke while he was, mm, 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 mm. This guy is evil, okay? Imagine him doing that while his own daughter 
and sleeping next door, you know. And imagine the family going through that process, like listening to this evil man talk bad about their daughter that he just took her life and listening to all the things that he did to her and all of that. It was just, it was just terrible, you know. So in the end, like I said, they had all this evidence against him and they charged him, they found him guilty. They found him guilty and they charged him to life imprisonment with a minimum of 21 years before he could get parole. Okay, the possibility possibility of parole after 21 years which means that there is a probability that this guy is going to go out which I think is ridiculous because somebody like him deserves to spend the rest of his life in jail like why is he going out what's he going out for what else is he going to do other than take another precious life like what 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 is he going now for? While the family was happy that they had gotten David out of the street, they wanted some answers from the police because the police really failed Lena. Okay, like it's a lot of questions, a lot of what ifs. Like, what if the police had showed up? What if the police had investigated this guy? What if the police had just gone back and ran the background check? According to their rules and regulations, the police standards, when they have reports like this, they're supposed to check this person's background going back five years. If they had done that, if only they had done that, they would have seen how dangerous this guy was. And they wouldn't have left him anywhere close to, the, to, to, to Lena. The family filed a complaint against the police and three officers were held accountable for the mistakes that they made. Guess what? Those three officers didn't get a day out of work. No, 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 they didn't. They got written warnings. Like, seriously. You guys made the serious mistake that that made this girl lose her life. And all they could do was give them written warnings. Mm. Another sad ending. Another sad loss. And another family left behind to pick up the pieces. Unfortunately, this one really, really could have been, could have been avoided. Like, we're left with so many questions. So many what ifs. This thing happened just a few days like three days to her 30th birthday like she was so young and then look at the little girl that she left behind like so sad so so sad and all of this could have been avoided if the police had just listened to her so the family is left to pick up the pieces they are now taking care of her daughter I read that the daughter is now living with Lina's sister in Rwanda, their home country. And I hope that one day, because of course David is in jail, he's going to be spending the rest of his life there and he has his whole life to think about his actions. And I hope that one day this little girl will go to the jail and look at the dad in the eyes and ask him why why did you have to do this why did you have to take my mother away from me like that and I'm hoping that at that time he would have thought about it and he will be able to give her not a reasonable reason because I don't think that there's anything reasonable that he can say there's any reason that he can give but he should be able to look at her and just maybe apologize because as of the time when the trial was going on he had no remorse he wasn't apologetic it's like he he's glad he did it it was all her fault 
So maybe that's all that this little girl needs to hear from him. I don't know. Yeah, so that's the story of Lena Kiza, you guys. Um, let me know in the comment section what you think about this story. Again, we're asking that if it's possible that you are in a DV situation, that you leave if you can. And when you're leaving, if it's possible that user doesn't know where you're going because it defies the purpose like why are you moving from a to b when he's still going to follow you to b you know if they don't know where you are then you could be safe you could be hiding from that person cut off all ties cut off that. it doesn't matter if you have a child with them they might be abusive to that child too you have to protect yourself because if you don't protect yourself, there's no way you can protect that child. I've learned that there's not going to be any change if you keep tolerating. The only time you're going to start making changes or you're going to start seeing changes is when you stop tolerating. Okay, you can't sit there and be like, oh, he hit me in the head or he beat me, but I'm just going to tolerate. No, it's not going to change. Until you take a stand, you stop tolerating, then it's going to change. I'm so proud of Lena. She tried. She fought. She asked for help. She begged. But nobody listened. The police that was supposed to protect her, they didn't. But she did what she could. And I'm sure that she did it for her daughter. And I'm sure that when her daughter gets to hear this story, her daughter's going to be proud of her too. I wish her a safe rest. And I hope that the family can, you know, not move on, but just try to deal with the loss. It's a great loss. I hope that they can deal with it. And thankfully, they have the little daughter there to kind of console them you know she left a precious gift for them and I hope that they just love her thank you so much for watching to the end you guys if you're still here I am pretty sure you enjoyed the video if you liked our content for today please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already show some love take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you in my next one Bye.